So welcome to the Big Digital Thinkers. I'm your host, Mike McClintock, with our co-host today, Jen O'Day. Our, uh, our guest on the show today is Tim Sweeney of Encore Auto Dealer Development. How's it going, Tim? Wonderful. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely. No well, you've got such good radio pipes. You sound so good over there. Have oh, you done geez. this before? Never. <laughs> no. Not on radio. A couple TV commercials I have done, though. It's even better. It's on the internet. Okay. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing these days. What's so I uh, went into developing dealerships, consulting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like to use the word consulting, right? Uh, because I want to become part of a team. That's mm-hmm. the difference in you know what I do is, you know, I come into dealerships a couple times a week. I work with a team, training, mm-hmm. um, just making them better. Mm-hmm. How'd you get into that? I mean, you've you've, you've been in, you've been in doing you know auto dealer stuff for a long time. Yeah. So I started uh, the day I turned eighteen. I started selling cars. Yep. Um, prior to that, actually, my father has been in the automotive industry for a while. So mm-hmm. even when I was little, I was running around car dealerships. I was going to say, when, didn't they make you be a porter or something? Or uh, not at 18. I was running tires. Cars. I think I did the porter stuff at 12 and 13 years old with my dad, but I didn't get paid for it. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you, just think you washed the cars. I did. I washed them. I vacuumed them. I uh, couldn't drive them around when I was younger. But uh, but so I turned 18 and uh, started selling cars and got a super, super passion for the business. It was mm-hmm. something that was just... It, you know, as soon as I sold that first car, I was ready to rock and roll. First yeah. week on the What was job. the first car you sold? It was a Cavalier, 1996 Cavalier Z24. is red. I almost remember the customer's name, but I don't remember it right now. Brand but, new. Uh, brand new, yep. Brand new Chevy. Yep. Went and bought her a, um, her favorite, I think, was Luther Vandross. <laughs> I went and bought a CD uh-huh. at Target, was next door, yeah. and put it in for her, and uh, she fell in love with me at that point in time, and I fell in love with the automotive industry. Was that so when you so. delivered her the car? You gave yep. her the Luther Vandross? I had a CD player waiting wow. for her. And, so. and, and you're still married? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I fell in love with it then, and the passion just grew more and more, and I um, worked my way through the dealership. By the yeah. time I was 21, I was a finance manager. Yeah. I uh, became a sales and finance director at the time I was 25 general sales manager before I was 30, and I was a general manager right around 32, so mm-hmm. about 21 years in it. And uh, so now I want to start teaching dealers how to do it the right way now. Because it's changed. It is, a lot. Things are a lot different. Absolutely, but a lot of dealers are still performing the mm-hmm. exact same way they did business 21 years ago. Right. You know, whether it be, you know, bringing the dealer, or excuse me, bringing the customers in, and, you know, starting from, you know, the test drive instead of they've already done their shopping. Why don't we start with the car they've actually already picked out and you know, right. work that way. So. The gap. There is. The online gap yep. between the showroom gap. If there was you communication. Could, you could spend an hour and a half online piece of building a brand new car, walk into the dealership, and they go, so what are you looking for, a yep. truck? Have a seat at my desk. Have a seat. Let's talk about it. Let's, uh, let's go through you know, what your wants and needs are. Yeah. Well, I've already done that. I've already did that. Why yeah. aren't you looking at it? I talked to the lady on the phone or mm-hmm. I sent the internet lead in and she knows all this information. So dealers are forgetting to, you know, record that and, you know, be prepared for the customers that are walking through the door. Mm-hmm. Right. Have the car waiting out front. Yeah. Right. Roll out the red carpet treatment on a customer you've set an appointment with that's going to be there at 215 on Monday and that you pretend you don't even know that's there when they show up. So. Yeah. So what's the, what's the right answer nowadays? Uh, be prepared, communicate, mm-hmm. and have a good process in place, mm-hmm. right? A good internet sales process. Yeah. Whether it be um, dealers call it BDC, business yeah. development centers, <clears throat> internet sales department. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's really just the customer communication department, right? Mm-hmm. So have all the information, have the documents ready. Mm-hmm. Do most of the work online when they get there. It's yeah. a lot easier to sell them a car. How are they doing that now? I mean... It seems to me like BDC is get them in, get them in, get them in, and then they get in, and then the sales guy is so. Let's talk about your wants and needs. So I think it's How more. How do you do that? What's it, the process? Build a relationship, yeah. build trust, over have the transparency internet. on the internet. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have the relationship, the trust, and you're not transparent with these customers, they're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Or let's say you do have that put in place, they're going to tr- come to you because well, they look like they're prepared. They what about like pricing? Really I, why not? Why yeah. not have pricing? They can see it anywhere else anyway. They yeah. see it on TV. Can they close it? You know, should they be able to close the deal over the over the internet and just walk in and pick up the car? You should be able to get an appraisal done online. Um, you should be able to get a lease payment quota to you online. You should be able to get exactly the car you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Down to the VIN. Absolutely. Insurance done. Mm-hmm. By the time the customer's ready to walk in. Flip them the keys and a Luther Vandross CD and you're absolutely. good to go. Give them something, you mm-hmm. know, and... They shouldn't be there longer than if they've already went through that. Why should, mm-hmm. why do they have to be there for two hours when they show up at a dealership? Yep. Why can't it be forty five minutes? Do you say skip the whole F and I box? 
or yeah, that's kind. Of, I don't know. So you know, there are good products in an F and I department. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying we can skip the whole entire F and I process, but you could go through it before. We could do it. So, yeah, we could absolutely. do it online. Yep. You can you know, give you them can buy curb feelers <clears throat> if you have the right people and processes in place. Yeah. You can have all that done. And they don't mind purchasing those products online. Your F&I yeah. dollars aren't going to change because you're doing it the way yeah. the customer wants it done. In some cases, I bet you see the F&I mm-hmm. dollars actually go up and the gross profits go up because you're being transparent with customers. F&I is finance and insurance. Thank you. Sorry, I should have. <laughs> that's when they, so that's when they throw that. you in that room with all the paperwork and then they sell you, uh, you know, Scotch Garden curb feelers and okay. all that stuff. The undercoating. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got you. Maybe it would go up if they could look at it online or have feel ambushed exactly so when you go online you have the right products you know you have a lot of people want the tire care which is fine it's mm-hmm. uh, the warranty on tires it's surface contracts mm-hmm. nowadays are a good thing to have it's repairs are very mm-hmm. expensive tire and wheels awesome especially yeah. if you have a truck i mean i destroy my wheels on my truck thank god for tire and wheel it's the best thing i mean that and they have my tires are like 279 dollars a piece with the windshields being so advanced nowadays, you know how much a windshield will cost you mm-hmm. on a, let's say, Chevy Traverse? It's about 475 bucks. Wow. One little crack in a windshield. So a fancy like windshield. That. They yeah. are getting that way because they're mm-hmm. putting, you know, antennas in them or they're putting defrosters or they're putting yeah. heads-up displays or built-in windshields. So th- there are good F&I products, but if you mm-hmm. explain those exactly the way the customers want to be presented to them, mm-hmm. you know, if is it in a finance office maybe they want to be there or maybe yeah. they want to do it online but you have to have right. the options available for customers at this point in time so. i've always felt like if i got ambushed on it in the fni office i felt like it was just a, you know i know it's even if i intellectually knew it wasn't a scam i felt like it was it was some kind of when i worked in the finance office a lot of times <coughs> customers would come in and they would say i'm going to the principal's office now yeah or I'm not going to buy any of your crap that you're about to sell yeah, me. Don't even try. So you'd have to almost, you know, bring them down and say, listen, I understand you've had some, you know, issues before. Mm-hmm. Let me show you what I have to offer. And, you know, you got to break that ice. But you can do that online, right? You can do that with a mm-hmm. good, solid sales process. So yep. building relationships, building trust in customers. So how do you do the process now? How do you change, you know, a standard operating, just get them, just get them in the door to being able to deliver the, to the car that they've already pre-negotiated and everything and just have them do the paperwork? Well, it's people. You have the right people. Uh, Mm -hmm. You have to have the right training. That's something that I offer and and make sure that um, you have the the right processes, but also an execution, too. You can put all the training in place. You can put the right people, but you have to execute. You have to execute the plan. You have Mm -hmm. to have a plan, a battle plan. You build a battle plan. You execute it with the right people in place, and that's how you do it. Has it been – is it more skunk works now? Is it – you know, dealerships having the internet sales department that's sort of over here a little bit, and then they still got the showroom guys that have been there for thirty years. You don't even talking see that. about who's up. You don't see that though. Yeah. You, you one or f- you know a few dealerships have an internet sales department. Yeah. But most of the time, you still see all of them. They're all afraid to change. Mm-hmm. You know, they but the don't ones know. The, that are the few that do have it. Is it kind of a skunk works process, or is it really out front? Is so it- a small percentage are trying to get to that you know forefront Mm -hmm. be the you know whatever you want to call it netflix Mm -hmm. you know some of them are looking at that Mm -hmm. but they're even still afraid because they're afraid of changing this age-old process yeah that they feel they're going to lose control of the customer but you know what they're really they don't have control to begin with they're going to lose the customer because look carvana Mm -hmm. right are they reshaping the way that people are buying cars used cars a little bit um do they want Salespeople delivering cars to their house. Most people don't want yeah. strangers coming to their house. Mm-hmm. They do want to be able to trust and see what they're doing before they show up so they mm-hmm. know they're dealing with a company that's worth dealing with. So. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, most of them are afraid to, to change mm-hmm. so, because what they've been doing has been working. And so those are the ones that are going to lose out. Are they starting to figure out that whether or not they're afraid to change, they got to change? Mm, I don't believe so. Yeah. No. They're uh, just. Most of them I talk to say they're doing fine. You know, they're putting enough incentive money in le- low lease payments now yeah. that you know they're having sales increases. Well, sure, fine. Sooner or later, you got it. You're not going to have these seventy-five dollar payments. And, yeah, right. You know, Seven thousand dollars on every hood can't isn't going to last right. forever. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, what's the first thing you do when you go into a dealership as a consultant? What do you first look at? So I want to break down, 
you know, what is their sales process? I like to communicate with the staff, not so much the management. I like to find the, the grassroots. I want to see the people that are talking, find out what their biggest issues and what's taking them or what's not, what's keeping them from taking the dealership to the next step, whether it be management or they're not, you know, spending enough money here or what departments. So people will start kind of, I don't want to say telling on the other departments, but at least you'll start getting some honesty from people when you start the ones that are in the trenches talking to customers. And I'll tell you what, some of the salespeople know what should happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So you work there, I start looking how leads are being handled. So I'll jump in the CRM tool um, and find out, you know, I'll take their last 15 or so internet leads or web leads or just leads in general. And I find out, you know, what type of communication is happening? Are they doing the age old thing? You got to come into the dealer. I'm sorry. That's all right. You're fired. You got to come into the dealership. We're not going to give you any pricing. You know, right. uh, I'll look at that and, you know, kind of find out, you know, where we can improve that one. We'll look at the. Work. Is that standard? Is yeah. that the trying to get them at, trying to get them in the door? Everybody thinks that's the way you have to do business. Customers it just seems like they're going to lose 99.9% of them at that point. You when, know? Especially when, if you just want a friggin' price. Right. I'll when come and the, buy it today. Tell me how much it is. When some of the dealers start changing and that becomes a pattern and they see that's the way we should have, that's when the change will happen. Right now, Mm -hmm. everybody's just kind of being reserved. I just bought a new RV and I talked to six dealers on it and I pretty much had the same price, you know, I knew what the price was. And two of them just literally wouldn't even deal with me over the internet. One of them uh, wouldn't wouldn't give me the price uh, unless I was sitting in the box. Mm-hmm. And then I finally just said, screw it. And I bought one over the internet on email and text from, and went to Flint to get it because it, it was easy, you know? And I, I just basically walked in, signed a piece of paper, and drove away with it. You got it. You know, That's, why you, is it so hard? I never even met her. I didn't even know what she looked like. I didn't know. I didn't know what she sounded like. It was all email and text, and I drove up to Flint to pick it up. Customer or dealerships drove past three RV dealerships. They feel like they lose control. Yeah, because again, they don't have the right process. Right, Mm -hmm. they're not communicating effectively. Right, Mm -hmm. so they feel like they lose control if they don't have them in the showroom. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because right now, I tell you, dealers don't start changing. It's going to be a a a wide a wide awakening when they uh, Mm -hmm. the new world starts coming in of selling cars. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not that. They don't lose control, and that's the problem. They're losing control because we're not – customers, whether you buy an RV or you buy a TV, it has to happen the way they want it to happen, or they're going to find somebody else. Mm-hmm. Heck, when you go to a restaurant, if the water's not delivered to you at the right time, you're going to mm-hmm. get up. Most people will get up and leave, or your tip for the, mm-hmm. the waiter or waitress isn't going to be as high. So, I have that problem all the time. I, some once I drove to Flint to get my water because <laughs> – no. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon. Yeah, but too soon. You don't want to go there for yeah, water. Too mm-hmm. soon. Oh, geez. Did I just make a Flint water joke? Yeah, I think yeah. you did. <laughs> did you not? Uh, I completely didn't intend to. It yeah, was supposed to be an RV buying from Flint joke, and here I am making a Flint water joke. Maybe we'll maybe we won't even edit that out. We'll leave, we'll leave that one in. Uh, you got anything? I mean, you're just so right, though. I... If I purchase something, I don't. I don't want to go in the dealership. I want to do it online. I purchase everything online, even down mm-hmm. to like my paper towels. I purchase online. You do purchase online. Yeah. I do everything. Millennials. Online. So in that, millennials, that that's what millennial do. doesn't if want to buy something car, online? When I bought, I bought my uh, younger brother a car. Did everything online. I just went into the showroom to buy it to Pick it up. give them the money and take the car home with me. Mm-hmm. And that's the <clears throat> you have to be the way. And then they still want to test drive cars. You still want to come right. in and make he, sure. We still test drove it, but like he let me talk to him online. I didn't even have to call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you come in, you take it for a test drive, and it's mm-hmm. exactly what the where he started. Okay, so the you know he started the trust, he started the relationship, and as long as he, whatever he said was truthful and continued, right. that's where you want to do business with. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. So um, we'll turn into pre-owned, certified cars, used cars, whatever you want to call them. Same thing. Customers call in. There's a couple of questions they ask. Same stuff. Carfax. Mm-hmm. You can see it online, but they're gonna act and just make sure it's. Mm-hmm. They're gonna validate it. Is it a smoker car? Mm. They want to make sure that nobody smoked mm-hmm. in the car. You know, they want to make sure the miles are accurate that they have on the on the the website, the listing. And if those things are right, it's. I'll come in and take a look at it. I'm gonna take it for a drive, but. Mm-hmm. You know, can I do a financing with you, or can I bring you a check? Of course, we can do the financing here. Send me. Uh, you can do our online credit application. And, mm-hmm. and if you start, and when the customer shows up, you have the car waiting. 
I'd have it cleaned up yeah. and detailed yeah. and make yeah. sure it's perfect. I want the tire shine on it, yep. right? Yep. You know, whether we can, you know, finish the contract online or we, you know, go in the office mm-hmm. box, whatever you want to call it. But as long as you're, you know, they don't mm-hmm. mind necessarily if you have to do some of the paperwork there. Yep. We still have to have some wet signatures. Yeah, I think if people, you know, have that, that transparency and trust, I think they'll pay more and drive past other dealerships. Oh. Just to not deal with it, you know what I mean? Pay I mean, I, I don't think if people are. I think dealers maybe they get it worried that they're going to have everybody's going to turn into a terrorist shopper and it's all going to be an auction down to the least common denominator. And I don't think that's true. I well, th- if I they're going to do it, they're going to do it either what way. What difference does it exactly? Whether they're going to be a terrorist price, shopper. You don't give them a price. Yeah. They're still going to be that shopper. But what and difference does it make? Price. I don't care about ten bucks a month on a four hundred dollar payment, you know. But I, I'm not going to be like, well, I'm going to go deal with this guy that's uh, jerking me around mm-hmm. and is going to make me sit there for six hours to save 10 bucks a month. Never in a million years. It's I'll all pay a s- premium. It's all about establishing trust. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, if, if you can establish trust and start that relationship mm-hmm. from the point of contact and answer their questions. Something I see, too, they'll send a lead, you know, whether it's a web lead or, you know, cars.com, whatever it comes from, whatever source. They'll ask, I'd like to get a lease payment on a such and such car, 12,000 miles a year. They have all the detail. And guess the email that gets sent out to the, the customer. Hi, we'd like to set up an appointment time at such and such time. Here's my number to call me, period. Mm-hmm. But I just asked you for a lease payment at 12,000 miles a year, mm-hmm. and you answered zero. Well, it, nothing. Yeah. Way to gain control out. there. Yeah, now I'm, I'm going to move on to the next yep, dealership. Yep. That'll at least answer my question. So back to your question, what do you do? I look at those leads yeah. and make sure that they're communicating correctly with these customers. So. so you're basically teaching the process of how to establish trust and gain control and sell this car over the Internet because it's 2017. Yeah. Basically. I'll just sell the car. I mean, take right. the Internet out of it. Yeah. How to sell a car now. Right. In 2017. Right. You want to be Netflix or Blockbuster? Boom. You want to be Amazon? Pick that mic up and drop it. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Yeah, probably not easy. <laughs> it's expensive. It looks expensive anyway. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Tim. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for swinging by. It was a great conversation. All right, cool. Thanks.